The benefits of DevOps are well established, and hopefully today you've learned a bit about the benefits of using a DevOps platform to do DevOps. But before we achieve any of those wonderful business outcomes, we need to actually get our software and our processes up and running. Now, doing that on a DIY DevOps tool chain that you've built out of multiple solutions from multiple vendors can take you weeks. And even when you're done, it may or may not work the way that you want it to. Now, since GitLab is a DevOps platform with one single application for soup to nuts, everything you need to deliver value to your customer, as you might expect, it is considerably easier to get that going. But don't take my word for it. In our next talk, IBM's Seema Saharan will talk to us about GitLab's auto DevOps and how you can use that to get up and running right away. Let's check in and see what she has to say. Hello everyone. In this talk, I will discuss about Auto DevOps with GitLab CI. Before jumping to that, I would like to introduce myself. I am Seema Saran, currently working as an Associate Systems Engineer at IBM. And these are my handles for GitLab and Twitter. So the workflow of this session will be stages in GitLab pipeline. What is Auto DevOps? How to enable it and integrate with the Kubernetes cluster? And uh, finally, I will show you the demo how you can trigger Auto DevOps in your project. So first things first, the stages in a GitLab pipeline. So there are 12 stages. First is auto build, auto test, auto code quality, auto SAS, that is static application security testing, auto dependency scanning, auto license management, auto container scanning, auto review apps, auto DAS, that is dynamic application security testing, auto deploy, auto browser performance testing, and Finally, we have auto monitoring. So what exactly is auto DevOps? GitLab auto DevOps helps to reduce the complexity of software delivery by setting up pipelines and integrations for you. So you don't have to worry about writing your pipelines or your YAML files. GitLab does it for you. You don't have to worry about that. So if you don't like uh, writing your YAML files, so it will be uh, benefit for your project. So using Auto DevOps, you can detect the language of your code, automatically build, test, measure the code quality, because usually we ignore code quality in our project. So, and that is very, very important also. We can scan for uh, potential vulnerabilities, security flows, licensing issues, Monitor in real time and deploy your, uh, you can deploy your applications directly to the cluster. So how to enable auto DevOps? So for that, you can go to settings and then CI CD, and then you will find lots of options. And the second option will be for auto DevOps. You can expand that section and you can enable it. And you can also decide which environment you want to enable it for. So if you want that you directly uh, deploy your changes, your code into production, you can select the first options. If you want to manually deploy it to production, then you can choose the third option. And second option is for like, if you want to do uh, incremental rollouts, you can do that also. So it depends on you and your project. So how do you want to do that? Next is how you can integrate a Kubernetes cluster. For that, you need to go to infrastructure and Kubernetes cluster, and then click on integrate with the cluster certificate. So there will be two options. You can integrate with either Amazon EKS or uh, Google GKE. In this uh, demo, I have used Google GKE because it's much more easy to uh, integrate it with GitLab. Um, if you are already working on Amazon EKS, then uh, it's OK. Uh, I used uh, Google GKE in this demo. So after you integrate with the cluster, it will be like this. You have you will have a Kubernetes cluster uh, displayed on your Kubernetes cluster section. 
and i know the name is uh, eks um yeah i forgot to name it as gke so but that's okay okay so it will show you the nodes and your core cpus and uh, memory it has and everything about that cluster and you can also click on that cluster to know more information and you can also integrate prometheus and um, elastic to know the metrics of your cluster so after you do that after you integrate your kubernetes cluster and auto devops uh, you enable the auto devops you will see in your project uh, the main uh, repository you will see that these two options will be there that kubernetes is there you have um, uh, set up the cluster and you have also enabled auto devops so now uh, the demo part so this is my project for um, this demo and um, i didn't create any of this uh, files i just uh, created the template that gitlab already provides and there are many templates to choose uh, and they are already auto devops configured that they support auto devops so i chose a project with ruby so now uh, if you see that um, if i make any change in the code any any kind of either it's small or big any kind of change so let's open up the web ide that gitlab provides and i will change the readme file because you know it's easy i don't want to uh, change any code base so i will just um, remove this line testing auto devops uh, i used it a few days back for testing purpose so uh, i just want to remove it and i will keep this line as it is so i will commit this change and i will say that deleted testing auto devops in readme file okay and i want to create a new branch so that um, uh, i will be able to create a new merge request and i will assign it to myself and create merge request okay so you can see here that it's checking pipeline status and it will start running the pipeline before deploying it to the production so it checks that whether this merge request is correct or not like um, whether it's ready to go to the production level or not and all these things so it will take a while uh, so i will show you already um, merge request okay so if you go to pipelines you can see here the, the i ran this pipeline two days ago and if i check this uh, all the stages have been passed and if you check here that there are few uh, there are actually many stages in this first is build of course second is test and test there are multiple kinds of test in this and next is review dashed that will uh, check the security and next is performance and uh, the last one is cleanup so all these changes will be after uh, it emerges okay so all these kinds of changes will be there and if you see here the pipeline that is running right now we can check the status what uh, what are the stages that are running in the pipeline so there is build test review test performance and cleanup so all these stages are there and it takes a while to run all these pipelines and uh, finally come to the cleanup stage so uh, that's okay and also we can check um, what this particular stage is doing like uh, okay so it is uh, building the docker file uh, since the project has uh, not uh, the docker files so it will just 
uh, use the docker file doc docker file that auto devops has okay so uh, all these pipelines were passed and some of them are failed but that's okay and the past one we can check all the information here it was this so after uh, okay if i revert it back let's revert it back okay so we can check here after this pipeline finishes and we do the merge uh, all the pipelines will pass and then we will do the merge because it's ready to be in production so since i have enabled the auto devops to be directly deployed to the production so if it will just run run the pipeline and deploy it to production uh, so that we can see those changes in our project okay so it will be there so we can also check what uh, this pipeline has like some information we have like uh, browser performance test metrics for our same three were improved so that's pretty good and we found one high um, we got some vulnerabilities and for one is really high so we can check that and check uh, we can view the full report and click on that uh, we can also check what uh, kind of uh, security issues are there and which file is causing that so we can also dismiss this or create a new issue and correct that and everything so gitlab provides all of the, the all of these things because usually we can't find them and gitlab does it for us and also we got new uh, no new licenses so it's checked and pipeline is uh, passed two days ago that was um, old pipeline okay so uh, that's pretty it it's still running but uh, you got the gist of uh, how auto devops work and there are so many things to explore in auto devops like you can see the metrics of your cluster how it's um, using the cpu and all all the things uh, okay and and that is not it you can also customize your yaml files uh, that if the same pipeline is running again and again so you can use cache for your pipeline so that it will not take much time and uh, one thing i forgot if you see that we don't have any yaml file like dot gitlab uh, ci dot yaml file we don't have that file in our project so that's auto devops it won't run uh, the pipelines on our project but on the gitlab side okay so that's basically the auto devops and you can do multiple things uh, okay so if we go to the environments you can check um, that we have one environment that is production environment and you can also create new environment so it, it, just ignore that okay so we have one instance available for production environment and you can check all the things that what it what it is what it has okay and i have also told uh, multiple things about how you can customize your environment if you don't want to deploy it directly to production then you can just go to settings and uh, then ci cd and then you can configure that and you can also uh, create multiple kubernetes clusters and multiple environments so it totally depends on your project how big it is how many environments you want so you can always customize that and uh, you can refer the gitlab documentation it's pretty good uh, it explains everything and you can try that
okay so that was it uh, for this session i hope you enjoyed it i hope you have gained something and thank you so much